Hi everybody, welcome along to the latest edition of Get Stuck In. We're going to be looking at the Dublin Racing Festival in due course with Martin Dixon and Dan Barber. First of all, that's Trials Day last weekend. What did we learn? I think we learned that Edward Stone should be clear favourite for the champion chase. Oh, it was an absolutely massive run. I know I'm completely biased. I've been putting him up on the show for ages. <laughs> but in a race where he didn't get a freebie in front of the Tour de Gilles, but he had things his own way. And there was a sense definitely that Edward Stone was ridden with the target on his back being that of an ergamine to beat him and the move he made to get from two out to in front after last I thought was massive I think he'll be better for the run as well I think he'll reverse form and we've said a few times it's a weak race and it might be even weaker if an ergamine can't up his game after that pretty lifeless performance Do you agree? Uh, yeah I think he was beaten wasn't he when he made that mistake at the last I think he is clear favourite now isn't he immediately after the race it was sort of a bit of a two in and throw in but I think the sort of general consensus is that Edward Stone does deserve to be, but I agree with Dan. He's, he's, he's probably going to take a lot of beating. The likelihood is I would see that Editor de Gilles would be respected a bit more and probably pushed a little bit harder through yeah. the early stage of the race. I know that he didn't have to go, so I know he didn't have it easy and the time was decent, but I think there'll just be a little bit more competition that'll make it harder to make all of the running, if you like. And I would imagine as well that Edward Stone would be ridden you know, more mindful of the full opposition rather than just an ergamine in the way that he probably was to some extent on Saturday. So he looks the right favourite. I still think Grenatine's a decent... I know he's shortened up a little bit from last week, you know, with the sort of um, the, the market changing at the front end. But I still think he'll run really well in a champion chase. But if Edward Stern is on his game, he showed obviously what he did to him in the Tingle Creek, didn't he? OK, Cotswold Chase. I don't think it was a very good race, if I'm being honest. Like, I think uh, Hoysen, you know, obviously we know he's got he has got a lot of ability but for him to get away with those jumping errors that he may, made and probably will continue to make to some extent it's a, just a bit of ignorance I think on his part he's got a, a lot of ability and a, a big staying engine there but for him to get away with those I think tells you that probably it wasn't the strongest of races Noble Yates is probably the likeliest of them as a Gold Cup candidate I'd say I would expect the headgear to go back on him and he's a very strong stayer but I, I, I don't think any of that field will be good enough to win Mm. and up to scratch Gold Cup anyway. Yeah, I think in hindsight, you look at protector out the, the noises were that it possibly wasn't cherry ripe anyway, but real holes in the Betfair chase form, I think, to some extent, and particularly the Plutard blowing out. I mean, based on last season's Gold Cup form, protector out himself, who was favourite on Saturday, will have to raise his game if he's going to be any closer than he was 12 months ago. I agree that Noble Yates is the horse to take for it in that sense. I thought Sounds Russian ran mass. He was in front a long way out. He made that bad mistake where there was a cross-wide between him and Sean Quinlan at the at the fourth last, and he was only run down late. I think he'd go well for a long way in a Gold Cup, but I do think the the clues are there. Noble Yates, headgear back on, extra two and a half furlongs. That's just going to be right up his street. I mean, I've my, got... An, my problem with him would just be price. I think he's about seven to one, isn't he? Anti-purse Noble yeah, Yates, the, the, which kind of factors in that we're all fe feeling thinking like the same thing. the likely Yeah, the, the others from that race, even the two that beat him are 20s in the region of 20s. And just to, without wanting to go back to that, just going back to that Champion Chase picture, he's an ergamina horse who's going to pester Editor de Gilles because the hold-up tactics, I don't think they necess necessarily suit him ideally. I think he's an enthusiastic horse who wants to get on with it. It worked last year, but that Champion Chase last year was, was one of the worst we've seen, wasn't it, in terms of quality? Okay. Uh, this weekend, we're looking plenty of quality. Dublin Racing Festival will provide that. You get the Silly Isles uh, at Sandown. You get the Titan Chase, where Hoist and your Noble Yates were the first to home uh, last year. And you get Trials Weekend up at Musselburgh. It's called Trials Weekend. Um, Stuart Crawford is a busy, busy trainer. He's got entries everywhere. Very much a hands-on trainer. Stuart Crawford joins me now. Horses in good form. and looks like you're a busy man. What are you up to at the minute? Oh, I'm just, just out for a quiet ride here. I'm just... Uh... Just getting limbered up to go for a canter. I love a quiet ride. What, what are you riding? I'm riding a horse here. I hope could be uh, my first Cheltenham Festival winner. Ooh, go on. Tell us more. So, uh, look, he's a horse there. A horse called Dorgan Cock. We'll be aiming him for the Fox Hunters. Um, he's had one run this season. Probably a wee bit unlucky not to win in Down Royal and Boxing Day. Get coloured by um, David Christie's good horse. Um, probably the best hunter chaser around in my opinion so look we, we'd be getting excited now with this horse now okay well you, don't be falling off him because you're speaking to me right <laughs> you're not exactly hands free um i want to talk to you about the weekend you got entries at musselburgh you got entries at weatherby in the titan you got entries at leperstown start with the titan at weatherby oh two will he come over 
it's looking that way. So we had uh, O'Toole and Gold Cup Bailey in there, but um, Gold Cup Bailey goes to day and air, and O'Toole had a, a possibility of going to Leopard's Town, but we felt felt Wellerby might be might be a nicer uh, a nicer next step for him. So it's looking at this stage like that's that's where he'll travel to. Tell, tell us about him. He won Newcastle last time out of a mark of 130. He's a horse there that we've saw an awful lot of uh, right from the word go. Uh, won his bumper well. Obviously, then Simon and Isaac, then they stepped in and bought him um, mm. after he won his initial bumper. He'd some very good bumper form then after that. Split Kilcrot and Sir Gerhard in, in Punchestown. Um, probably last year, we probably made a bit of a conscious decision not to aim too high over hurdles. And Look, he didn't. He, he certainly didn't blow anybody away in what he did, but he, he got a bit of experience. He matured a bit more, and we're just struggling for something to start him off in. And he had a, a handicap mark, an open mark, 130, and yeah. we decided we'd take on seasoned handicappers at Newcastle. Uh, proved to be a good enough call. He, he won well there, um, you know, and it was a potential bit of a banana skin. Like even you're you're taking on seasoned horses yeah. with a first time out novice, you know, there's plenty to go wrong. But look, he came through that well. And um funny, like when we when I was driving home that night, Anthony Bromley straight away said, Look, maybe that Wellerby could be the race for him. So yeah. it looks like that's the way it's gonna work out. Um another really good horse is now where when he was good at Down Royal last time out, he's in at Leperstown and at Weatherby. Where do you think he might go? Um, I'm up, still up in the air at the moment there. Um, Weller, uh, Wellerby looks like it could be a, it'll be a small field and, and uh, you know, that could be the place for him. Um, but look, it's hard to run away from, from a big, big value race in Leopardstown and, and, uh, you know, hopefully I think either track will suit him well enough. Um, so look, we'd probably make that call. You know, and obviously we have a few more hours to think about it, so we just haven't anything set in stone with him yet. But very keen to get him out. He's been a bit unfortunate. We we were all set to go to the beach here after him yeah. winning in Down Royal, and he got a slight setback, and and we missed that, and obviously missed last weekend in Cheltenham. Um, so I he's he's been kind of on the boil for a wee while, so no, we're keen to get him out and mm. and uh, keep him progressing. Hopefully, will you be going to Scotland with anything to Musselburgh? Uh, Musselburgh, so we have a couple of horses in there. Probably the main one we'd, we'd go with would be Homestead George. He's yeah. won a bumper there, won a handicap there, second to last day. Steps up in class into that Scottish County hurdle. But I think he's, I think he's, hopefully he's a horse there. The best days are still to come from him. So it could be definitely a, a very possible option for him. Um, just that uh, this association with, with Simon and Isaac, it, it's fantastic. Numerically, you've got more horses than any other trainer. Uh, some of them, they, they go on to Willie, the recent bumper horse at, at Navin. The name escapes me at the second. He was very good. It's for me. It's for me. How, how, and he won a point to point at Lockamore, your local track, didn't he? He did. Um, he was one that he was sourced as a store by, by Anthony. Um, I think he came out of the Land Rover sale. Hmm. Um, my brother Ross, he would have bought him initially and he came to me before the point to point um look he was very straightforward he, he did his work he asked him to do a little bit more you're working on a better horse he works with it you know but he's not a he probably never was a horse that was real flash at home which people tell me they're they're usually the best ones you know so um the day on his point to point he was very very impressive and equally impressive then again in the bumper mm. No, he, he looked he looked proper at Navin. Um, busy weekend coming up. I might see it. Whether it be whatever happens, we wish you the best of luck. That'll do. Appreciate it. No, and sure, we need we need plenty of luck. Sometimes if we can stay away from the bad luck, I'd nearly take that. So yeah. fingers crossed. Thanks, Stuart. Right, I wouldn't be get stuck in without catching up with a uh, Mullins and earlier the excellent day of Ward caught up with Patrick and talked all things Dublin Racing Festival. Well, Patrick, it's a fascinating Dublin Racing Festival as ever, and possibly the most fascinating race of all. The Irish Champion Hurdle, we've got Honeysuckle in there and a couple of close Sutton big guns in Stateman and Vauban. How much are you looking forward to this one? Yeah, so look, it's going to be the race of the weekend. Um, obviously, Honeysuckle looking to um, extend her record in the race, and I think Giant Hurdle will fly in Isterac. Um, But look, I suppose 
we're all smelling a bit of blood at the moment. Um, obviously, she got defeated for the first time. The hat was grace. Um, you know, I, I don't think I, you know, it's obviously, it wasn't a bad run by any stretch of the imagination. And she has obviously ran maybe below par in that race before. But I suppose it just opened up the possibility that she is beatable. So um, we're looking forward to have a good, another go at her. Um, Statement, obviously, it'll be his first time taking her on. Likewise, for Aubon. Um, they're both younger horses coming up. And as Sharjah found out at Christmas, um, youth is often very hard to, to hold back against. So, um, look, Statement will be the number one. Uh, obviously, he he everything's been gone really well with him since Christmas. Um, and Bob Warren, obviously, that was his first run of the season at Christmas, so he's entitled to improve a little bit. And I think probably ran slightly better than the bear form. I know Paul won quite handily, but Danny seemed to kind of bank on Paul maybe leaving a, a gap up his inside down to the bypass last fence, which obviously didn't materialise. So he's gone half length up. On on Stateman's inside, he then had to pull back and come around. Um, and you know, any jockey will tell you at race speed in the last furlong and a half, you can't really do that. So that would have cost him a couple of lengths. So I'd expect Spawn to be finished a little bit closer this time. Fascinating stuff. And all eyes on Gallop de Champ in the Irish Gold Cup. Fair to say that isn't as deep a contest in terms of the opposition. What are you hoping to learn from him on Saturday? Yeah, look, the race is probably cut up a little bit. There's no Plutard, no Manila Endo, no Conflated, um, no Noble Yates. So, um, but, you know, I, I think, look, what we're looking for is for the settle and jump and stay, basically. Uh, while it is only a bare three miles, Leprosan does take a good bit of stamina. You know, there's only one fence kind of in the last half mile. It's it's uphill from about three furlings out. You mightn't really see it much on the on the TV, but it is. Um so just that's you just want them just want to settle and, and jump and, and stay and win hopefully. Um, but obviously I'll be a Statler in there as well, who is an exciting young horse. Won the four mile chase last year, um, ran a cracker in Tremor, giving Nil Indo ten pounds, which in what would have been a, a home game from Nil Indo. Um, Henry's only kind of five minutes down the road, uh, so he's come forward from that. So it'd be interesting to see where he bears out against the likes of you know Kenboy and Frank Report and Fury Road. See where he slots in because you know he's still a lively outsider for a Gold Cup Statler. Um, in what possibly could be an open year, uh, a horse with his kind of stamina, uh, you know, a la, I suppose Noble Yates and Hewitt are thinking the same, but you know, horses like Native River and and Stayers do do win the Gold Cup and you know, run well in it. So, uh, it'll be fascinating to see how Statler gets on. But look, we're, we're hoping and expecting Gallop and Shams to do what he does. Talking about doing what he does, Fasel Vega, another your horse, other age of the age spectrum, but he gets the job done. Uh, is it a big weekend for him in terms of where he might go at Cheltenham? Um, is it a big weekend in regards to where he might go? Um, look, I, 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 he, he could go either way. Obviously, Kivega stayed three miles, she won four stairs, hurdles, and punched down. Um, and uh, no, yeah, look, he's a lot of people weren't impressed with him at Christmas, um, but I thought, you know, when you look back at the race. The horses that got left behind, uh, Pat the Roo, um, and Astro Diamond. I would ride Astro Diamond riding her to run well, but you know she came out and won since. Pat the Roo came out and won since, um, and Internet was was going to run very well before breaking down, unfortunately. So, you know the, the, those two other the two Gelling got left behind at the second last in the percent of Christmas. And if you watch Paul's body language down to the last from the home bend down to the last, he, he doesn't ask Fasa Vega to do anything. He just sits against them. So, you're not going to be very impressive if you're only asked to go and race for the last furlong, you know. So um, I thought he showed plenty. Um, this race is a bit more depth to it. High definition will obviously be a fascinating contender. Um, personally, I wasn't blown away by his jumping uh, on at Christmas. And uh, it was obviously the race form has worked out really well. There was no last hurdle that day. I wonder what high definition will his jumping improve. It should, but... Um, I just want, I just have a little query about his jumping, uh, but you know, look, I could be completely wrong. We obviously have a little bit more experience than him. Um, and Dark Raven obviously could be a dark horse from, from our yard as well. He's got a lot of ability. He let Thomas will go again. Um, Gaelic Wire is there. I, I would imagine he's probably done enough to go straight to Cheltenham, but we'll see what Willie thinks tomorrow. Uh, but a, again, look, we'd be hoping Fasta Vega comes out and just uh, and can win. If he wins a second like Christmas, we'd be more than happy because. Um, you know, it's it's February, not March. Absolutely. And Patrick, just a final question. It's the bumper, big bumper. It looks a deep bumper this year at Leopard Sound. Obviously, you'll have a close eye on the one that you're riding in there, plus one or two others from this day. What are you hoping to learn from that race? 
hoping to learn which of them is the best. Um, it's it's wide open. Uh, you know, I have to say nothing at home had really stuck its hand up this year and said, I'm you know, I'm I'm Tata Vega or I'm Bernie Hollow or appreciate it. Um, but that doesn't mean that there isn't one. Bumper horses improve at all different rates through the season. Um, look, Chosen Witness was probably the most impressive on the track. Uh, he won a 2-2 on heavy ground on Limerick. Uh, and look, Limerick at Christmas is, you know, it's it's the championship rather than the Premier League, which is winning in Leprosan. Um, But he was the most visually impressive. Um, he wouldn't be quite as flashy at home. Um, I thought back to file, you know, looked like he needed every yard of two and a half in Leprosan. But I think he's come on a lot for that race. You can often see horses... Um, you know, people see he probably got a, he might have got a hard race in bird commons, but like nowadays with the sticks we use, and particularly in Irish bumpers, we don't really you know we only race for the last kind of half mile. And if you watch me race, I only really ask them to really race for the last two furlongs. So they don't get hard, hard races. Um, but sometimes a race like that race at Christmas can just switch a horse on um, if he's ready for it, and he was. So I think he's come forward from that. Special Cado is going to be eleven pounds better off with Tom's facile mode, so that that makes that match rematch quite interesting. Um, so yeah the answer is I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to ride yet to be honest I'm going to be leaving it to the last minute and probably discussing it with Willie um, but one I will be very wary of is um, well two I'd be very wary of um, John Kiley's horse A Dream to Share he impressed me hugely when he beat Racco Boy in a bumper in Tipperary and I'd be, after running Racco Boy around very well in the ancient bumper uh, I think he's a very decent horse and I thought Emmett's horse fair on Lily Ran very well at Christmas. In the land, he could beat him. Can't run here because he's won over hurdles. Uh, or he's ran over hurdles, sorry, in France. Um, and if Il was lining up here, I think he'd be one of the favourites. So, Ferran Lee is one I'd be wary of also. And with the Dublin Racing Festival on the horizon, joined by Gordon Elliott. Gordon, two very important dates in the calendar. It is a great weekend's race in Ireland. A lot of good racing, probably a lot of horses last on before Tevin, so really look forward to it. And Gordon, a highlight on Saturday for many, obviously, is the Irish Gold Cup. Last year's winner conflated. You're going to go straight to the Cheltenham Gold Cup, so it's just Fury Road. He's the only one we have in his looks a hot race. Um, I suppose we'll have to wait to where the ground is drying up at the moment, so it's just an ideal um, for a lot of horses, but I think it will still be Fury Road. So, yeah, he takes a chance. He was third in Leprous on the last day in the saddle, so looking forward to running him. And good to hear from Gordon. Eddie. Busy, busy weekend coming up because he's going to have a, a couple of runners at Musselburgh by the sound of him, a couple of runners at Sandown and a big, big squad at, at Leperstown. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, it's tough when you look at the amount of ammunition that Willie Mullins <laughs> has got to fire yeah. at the weekend. It's not getting any easier out there. So understandable. I think the right move with Jerry Colomb, that two and a half mile at Sandown, stiff track, mm. soft ground, that'll be perfect for him. He looks a stayer in the making, very strong stayer, doesn't he? And mm. I think that test round Sandown should be ideal for him to maintain his unbeaten record yeah like these small battles now I mean it's, it's gone from being sort of nip and tuck between the two of them whereas the Mullins dominance now has just gone up another notch and he, even Gordon's swimming against the tide trying to try to wrestle back some of that some of that power in Ireland but he's still got very promising horses and it probably tells a bit of a tale doesn't it that he won't come over to Sandown the op- even though it's a graded race the options are easier mm. and you're not going to be butting heads with a ridiculous squad of Mullins horses. There are two or three races which you know he's winning them. It's just a case of which one. Uh, mm. I think I think that lack of competition is is a bit of a problem. I you know, agree. Uh, Spring juvenile, the f- six of the eight, first yeah. six of the veteran all the only, You know, part, part part of the interest of the sport from a fan's perspective is. You know, you want to listen to the interviews. You want a bit of competition between trainers. You do, you know, you, you do want that, and you want to hear from different people, see different reactions, and things like that. And look, there's nothing Willie Mullins can do about it. He's an exceptional trainer that gets the results, obviously, for his horses, which is what owners want. But I think for a fan of the sport, it does just take the edge and take the shine off a little bit, and t- makes it a little bit less interesting, in all honesty. And I know that the horses are different, and the owners are, are, are different in some instances. But when you're just hearing the same thing again and again and again. Mm. again it's a little bit, you know, you well, can turn off, can turn you well, off a little bit. Cheltenham has been used, I think everybody obsesses over the thing, but Cheltenham's been used as a barometer for how British racing is really struggling, hasn't it? Oh, look, Ireland have won 20 odd races and Britain have won a handful. But that really, again, just reflects the Mullins dominance. Domestically, it's way more open over here. The big races are large to get shared around, whereas over there it is basically one trainer. And if Gordon and Henry can have a bit of a sniff around, then great. But 
Yeah, it's it a worrying feels picture. It feels a bit more like that this year than probably even I think last more than year, ever. I do, I agree. More like than ever. The Spring Juvenile is the sort of prime example of it. The Irish Gold Cup's a premier race, premier staying prize on home soil, and the shortest price non Mullins horse was 14s earlier in the week. Mm. OK, what are we looking forward to? Well, I am looking forward to watching it. I mean, one Mullins horse I'm particularly looking forward to, again, is Fasil Vega. I know he's got his knockers a little bit. Yeah, he probably does need to brush up his jumping technique a bit, but he's a novice, isn't he? He's a novice hurdler, like he's only had a couple of spins round and he's still going to be learning. There is no question in my mind that he's, he's, he's potentially an absolute top-notcher. Um, Looking at the two-mile hurdling division, novice hurdle division this year, I don't think he's got an awful lot to worry about and an awful lot to beat, if I'm being honest. there will be the odd horse. I actually quite like that charging fire of Ollie Murphy's. I think he could end up emerging as a, as a contender from the British at a bigger price. But looking forward to seeing Fasil Vega again anyway and seeing what he can do. And I think we might see the Murphy horse at the weekend as well. He's, uh, he's got possibilities. Yeah, because obviously he's meant to go to... Could go to hair doctor. Yeah, week, for the Rossington main, it was called off. Yeah. He's got he's got two good ones because that, that strong leader I was keen on at the start of the season. He's won all three starts over hurdles. He might be more an entry horse. I think for the weekend though, again it, it's Mullins. It's I'm looking forward to Statler potentially enhancing his Gold Cup claims, and I do think there's a situation where as a biased backer of the horse for Cheltenham anyway, where he could get beaten by Galapander Shams flat three miles on the weekend, but still not completely harm his Gold Cup claims, because for me it's still a bit like Noble Yates, it's mm. believing that he will relish You'd want him to get close enough, wouldn't you? Yeah, you want, you'd want him to. Handful of lengths, maybe if he can get Galapanda Shumps off the bridle, I think you'd definitely be encouraged for the weekend. And in that novice chase where the Irish Arco, where he's got so many again, I'm, I'm pretty anti-Dice Art Dynamo. I just think he's headstrong, lunges at fences, people are raving about it, but I can see him coming unstuck, and mm. he goes to his right a bit. I can see... I can see El Fabiolo lowering his colours. I still think he's a top-notch prospect. He, he, he's the horse I'd be joining you with in a, in a negative way. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really rate his form, if I'm being mm. honest. Like he did, he, even going back to his hurdles career, before like before he blotted his copybook a little bit, he was basically beating trouncing horses that couldn't get anywhere near him. And those rate, they've, they've proved to be third, fourth raters in all honesty, not, mm. not not really good horses that he was beating. So I think I do think he's got a, a fair bit mm. still to prove. Okay, that's our thoughts. Looking forward to her. We're still the Dublin Racing Festival this Saturday and Sunday. Right, closer to hand this weekend, what's gonna win? I'm going Haddock's Des Obo as a massive eye catch potentially in the handicap chase at Sandown. I'd be looking for at least 13 to 8, 7 to 4, hopefully. It's a race that Dolos has won every year, but this horse is very smart, I think. He got better with each chase run. Ran them ragged at Warwick. The horse galloped the shaft, so he thrashed that day with third time lucky even further back. He came out and won in the week at Hereford. He's got a perfect run style for Warwick, and I think that run style translates very well to Sandown as well, with the fences coming thick and fast. OK. Uh, Irish Arkle, El Fabiola to turn over. Dysart Dynamo, we've already mentioned the mm. race. Um, I think and I think Dysart Dynamo has got more on his plate and El Fabiola, perfect start to his chase career. There's loads more to come from him. It's an exciting time of year, isn't it? We get the Dublin Racing Festival out of the way. We're into February, you know, next month. And you can really start talking about it. I loathe talking about it early, <laughs> as you know, but you can start really building. Well, I, I do think the Saturdays have held their own as well when, mm. when we've had them, when the weather hasn't got in the way. We've had, like, really interesting races. Well, last Saturday was a prime, because we lost the week before, yeah. mid last Saturday. Must oh, be. yeah, what a, what a, you just won't get a better card than that Trials Day card. Well, your nine races of quality top to bottom. Yeah, good stuff. Right, really looking forward to it and so much to reflect on. Look forward to We'll be back next week or once again. See you soon.